This video was brought to you by Marcus Biel, Elbil Mac, Abadur Planner, Stolenberg, Camp Power, and Biel Componente. Yo, what's up? We are now sitting in the X-Bank G6 Performance and uh, this is gonna be a summary uh, driving impression of uh, the car. I spent some time with it, actually two rounds. You will see that there is a, a gray car, but also this uh, orange car. So yeah, <coughs> now how was it? Well, uh, it's, um, I'm not sure if this is intentional from uh, X-Bank to make a Model Y competitor, Model Y rival, Model Y copy, because if you look on EV database on Model Y versus the X-Men G6, you will see that the dimensions are almost identical. The exact same wheelbase, the, many of the dimensions are exactly the same. I'm like, what the heck, man? Okay. <laughs> um, but okay, uh, I mean, it's still gonna be a, an alternative to Model Y or Skoda Enyo or ID4. Man. The amount of left lane huggers over here, you know? yeah. So, uh, uh, I mean, how good is it compared to Model Y or the other cars in the same class? It is actually really good. I mean, there's a reason why Model Y saw like hotcakes because they made a good car and people want that kind of wait. Let me just holy macaroni, that guy is just so slow. It's a it's a Poston, but uh. He drives an electric uh, Ford van, e-transit, I think it's called. So, but Tesla, they kind of perfected it. They had a nice balance of uh, premiumness in the interior, features, efficiency, charging speed, range, you know, uh, and price. But then suddenly G6 comes out, boom! The price sits right between the Model Y long range and a uh, Model Y performance. And performance wise, I measure it to also be right between those two cars. And when it comes to space, uh, again, if you look up on EV database, which is just manufacturer data they take on, 
Oh, I, I have to count. I mean, I have to mention something. I have to interrupt myself. Do you notice how the freaking steering wheel just moves left and right like an unsecure teenager? It is super annoying, man. The auto steer, LCC. And I'm running on version 2.6. Wait, 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 it's called again. Let me check here. The latest and greatest software. XOS, no, it's not. It was 5.2.6 beta 1. So it should be the latest and greatest software, uh, but this still happens. You know, but it's a Chinese car. Don't expect any awesome, smooth uh, auto steer experience. But okay, so um, well, now I forgot what I was supposed to say. <coughs> Yeah, if you look on EB database, again, you will see that according to your manufacturer spec, uh, the Model Y is supposed to have a lot more trunk space and a lot more combined space when you fold the seats versus the, the G6. But actual practical test, which is the Bonobok test, reveals that they are roughly the same. You know, actually, uh, even the G6 slightly beat the Model Y, despite that, uh, yeah, it was 27 boxes. Despite that, Model Y can put one in the front. So technically, Model Y could only put 25 in here, at least from, from, from the front here and back. 25 versus 27. So I believe it's possibly because the G6 is slightly taller than Model Y, and that's how they managed to do it. But that means good headroom and also good legroom, good seating position in the back here. The seats in the back, they can recline. The front here, we have ambient light. You know, uh, which model, model Model Y, at least for now, doesn't have. And then according to the spec, uh, this is uh, 90. Oh man, there's so many 90. I think it was 92 kilowatt hour. Sorry if I miss uh, remember that one. There are so many 90 something kilowatt hour batteries nowadays. But uh, according to the spec, it's supposed to be 87.5 kilowatt hour net capacity, uh, at least according to EV database. I have measured 86.6, .6, which makes sense because there are always some discharging losses between the rated uh, you know, uh, capacity. But um, uh, 86 something kilowatt hour, uh, most of the competitors, the MEB platform and Tesla, they have roughly 75 kilowatt hours. You have around 10 kilowatt hour more energy even though this car is not as efficient as Tesla or the MAB platform, simply because you have a bigger battery means that you actually have more range. And they even offer this nice big battery at uh, a very competitive price. When it comes to charging, this thing charges like a boss, not only in a, the, the charging test where I go deep to 10% and then I you know, make sure that the car is preheated uh, to, the ma to the best uh, condition to do the charging test, but also during 1000 km challenge when I just hammer it and charge and hammer it. It was no rapid gate, no punishment points, you know, no, no cold gate. The car performed really well and it did 1000 km in nine and a half hours right on the same time as an Audi Q6 e-tron, faster than the MEB cars, faster than Tesla. Because it is the 800 volt architecture, around 600 something volt in the battery pack. Uh, and it charges at actually 285 kilowatt, supposedly. I'm not sure, maybe there's some battery heating or cooling going on there, but it charges way faster than Tesla. But you see, when I said uh, versus the spec or the test or whatever, right? When I also did that trip to um, Lillehammer with the family, then I didn't optimize everything. I didn't go deep. I plug it in at around 55, 60%. I don't remember exactly. And the car has been sitting still all day. It was around 50, uh, 20 degrees Celsius outside, right? Didn't preheat the battery or anything. Boom, 180 kilowatts at around 60%. You know, <laughs> even the ID7 I tested the week before, also same scenario, plug in around 50% at Ionity, of course, at Oye, it received only around 80 kilowatts in comparison. So this thing, I mean, it has the space and the comfort as similar other cars in the same price range class, but it has the charging speed like the more way more expensive Q6 e-tron even and even the 1000 kilometer challenge performance is uh, really top-notch beating the other ones in the same class matching Q6 that costs roughly twice as much as the the G6 right so it is really amazing what you get for the money but there are some there, there's always a butt crack 
the headlights are not the best uh, Tesla headlights or pretty much everything else is better yeah the Germans you know the uh, Skoda Enyaq uh, ID3 ID4 I mean ID5 way better headlights but just get slap just slap down the lead bar go to a bit component use my di the discount link and then you get some lead bar from uh, laser linear laser elite yeah boom and then you have good headlights um, when it comes to software and auto stair on the other hand there is no simple uh, install something that fixes it <laughs> so um, uh, where do I start uh, first of all I don't know what's up with this but I have trouble pinch zooming of course now the demo effect it works now just fine I really had problems pinch zooming and also when I want to find something on the map like they have Lillestrom or like you have to zoom so far in to see city names and to see point of interest and the navigation sometimes does some weird shit like I've navigated to Circle K fast charger at Valby well instead of going straight to Circle K it decided to go past Valby go north until the next exit turn around and then go back to Valby uh, why? <laughs> and the waypoint was like somewhere in the bush then close to Circle K so navigation is somewhat weak point also the auto steer uh, is a bit annoying if if you drive on motorway it will slow down and I'm not even hammering it even when they did the Sunday drive and I drove under the speed limit for example if it was 80 kilometers per hour limit I would drive at uh, 77 kilometers per hour but it was still slow down in the curves like uh, seriously uh, the, the curves weren't even that sharp uh, but fortunately or hopefully uh, there's gonna be an update I heard it from XPeng uh, not sure when it will come out but it, it's gonna fix many of these problems but you also see now that steering wheel is just jiggling jiggling it, it just creates an uneven uh, an unsmooth ride really annoying how it drives man like uh, when I when I went on that family trip I didn't say nothing I'm just kidding I didn't say anything uh, technically uh, gra grammatically it's incorrect to say I didn't say nothing well technically it means that you said everything yeah <laughs> but um, I didn't say anything to my family I just started driving uh, I did turn off LCC but I only used adaptive cruise control but the car was slowing down in many curves and I could see the passenger here uh, Amory's uh, big sister when it slowed down she was like was it several times you know and eventually I heard from the wife in the back she was like are you braking or is the car doing it I said <laughs> the car is doing it and trust me if I had LCC active it would be even worse and also if the auto steer was active it would be like eh, 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 eh. we're driving slow kind of slow now because of the slow left lane huggers club uh, but uh, if we drive faster you get more of that uh, lateral movement here so that, that is super annoying man uh, and I would personally not buy this car simply because of that because I use auto stay a lot uh, there are many kind of boring drives I have to do and th there is no need for me to manually drive just let the car drive for me and also speaking of speed limits the car just constantly misreports the speed limit uh, it, it claims the wrong speed limit all the time uh, even on the motorway in the 110 zone with two lanes in each direction it would claim it's an 80 zone one guy was like hey Bjorn you're, you're speeding you're driving so fast in the 80 zone I'm like uh, uh, no <laughs> just look at the road look what the road looks like you know um, so let me just check now it's a hundred okay it's hundred that's correct we come into a 90 zone will it read it correctly there okay it did that correctly yes that's good but during the, during the time I tested this car it was just constantly reporting the wrong uh, one and there's like, so many small quirks here like when you want to change following distance you press this button here and you can adjust it to five and then you click the other way to go to four but you see you hear the click but it's still five I can see in this but there it's four it miss registers the clicks that is super annoying man I mean when you have the click you should of course adjust it I have to punch it like an old man and wait a bit for it to register you know, that drives me nuts I don't know about you guys but at least that drives me nuts maybe if you're an old chap 
you don't care you want to punch the buttons yeah okay okay then no problem uh, and then I feel like the software is fairly well organized you have uh, the, the car here when you click on the car you have lots of uh, menu items you can click on something here and you get but you have several layers of menus you have you have one or a category here and then you have some tabs also here um, but um, as far as I know there is no search here many cars like Tesla and I think uh, was it Audi they have a search button so you can search for a certain item you're looking for which is very convenient because I was looking for that uh, that uh, switch between uh, dynamic and VLTP displayed range right you know we want to display gum or a, a flat rate well I couldn't find it I was looking like is it in the vehicle no is it in drive no is it in charging no it's not in charging is it in power supply discharging uh, no and then I found no it is in charging in the charging you scroll down a bit and then you find range display if you want to display it in standard dynamic or VLTP okay it was weirdly organized uh, but if there was a search button I would have found it eventually but okay you have to get used to this okay no big deal as long as you get used to it if you own the car no problem um, but yeah I feel like maybe the software could be slightly better also uh, more complaints when I charge the car there was something displayed here charging speed uh, and volts and amps and kilowatts at least but it doesn't show how many percent we have there and if you do this and this and while you're charging you can also get a charging screen you can even go wider like this and there is a charging screen you can get here with a, char a graph even also over there you don't see how many percent you have in the battery but you see it here as the only place but when you're driving the state of charge is displayed here in percentage but also there but then it's not consistent when the charging screen is active so um, it's just uh, I mean it works great I can still find information there but sometimes it's a bit uh, cumbersome why you can't have uh, like a smoother experience of the software you know I used to be a software developer before that's maybe why I'm so Nazi about some things um, and then okay look we don't need this oh, yeah you can you can actually no 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 don't slow down in the curve you freaking Chinese car shit okay and then many times also it cannot activate LCC I don't know why like uh, if you just happen to change lane or something uh, it, it's like it's not it's grayed out come on, come on it is good no, like, no I cannot activate it wait come on come on come on come on come on there there now now it's active you know I, I don't know why because most other cars as soon as you're in the lane there are nice clear lane markings it should be able to activate travel assist or whatever it's called and now it slows down like a Toyota driver again uh, and then it speeds up yeah so it the car overall is fairly soft I feel like maybe it bounces a little bit too much on the motorway some places um, but they had to choose between the softness and the thing and actually there's a bridge gap on at Mjösenbruen uh, over to Lillehammer I noticed that uh, some of the bridge gaps they were kind of harsh because uh, they slapped down some new asphalt there not long ago and in the um, even in the ID7 I tested recently with without DCC uh, the ride felt a little bit hard over some of the harsh bumps it was it felt like boom you know it hit me in the spine but the G6 actually floats over those bumps better so that's good but it seems like there's a um, there's a compromise because we don't have any active suspension no air suspension here so um, X-Bank chose to make the car softer so it's it has a softer ride and for example uh, I feel like some of the German cars and also Tesla but at least the comfort is pretty good maybe on level with scenic a noise level is actually very good on top uh, along with I think it was like roughly on top 10 or something and then uh, what else um, the acceleration time when it comes to I did the 90 to 10 percent acceleration uh, it has the best performance above around 70 percent and then below that level it tends to drop and drop and drop uh, and actually the 
the performance overall is somewhat poor compared to many other cars. Uh, since this is called a performance, you know, it shouldn't have a flat power curve and be able to maintain it. Maybe not all the way to uh, 10%, but at least most other cars I test nowadays, and down to even 20%, you get almost full power and quite consistent acceleration. Here, it is notably, noticeably slower, uh, below 70%. But um, yeah, uh, but overall though, uh, I still feel like if I want to give this car a total score, I would still give it a high score. Like, okay, it scores better on noise, comfort, uh, you know, some of the other stuff compared to, for example, Model Y or Skoda Enyaq or ID4. Uh, but then those cars, they might have smoother, smoother use experience in the, you know, overall. Um, yeah, another thing I need to mention before I forget it is that um, also the app, I tried the app, also the Xpeng app. Very nice that you can see cabin temperature in the app. Not many cars show you cabin temperature. Tesla is one of the few that shows cabin temperature. It's very nice to see that, oh, it is 35 degrees Celsius in the cabin. Let's pre-cool the, the car, right? Um, maybe Neo shows it. Oh, no, why do you slow down here? Shit, man. But what is not so great is that in the app, uh, first of all, it's in Norwegian. I cannot switch to English. Uh, and uh, you, you cannot see how many percent battery you have, which is weird because almost any app shows you battery percentage. You see how many kilometers you have. Uh, I'm not sure, maybe based on me. Oh, no, what the heck, man? Why'd you slow down so much? What the heck? Dude, go! Shit, man. Yeah, also when I do this, when I just hammer it, like, dude, you stupid car, go! Then it tends to go a little bit too much and then goes beyond the desired cruising speed, right? <laughs> I almost crashes into the car in front. I'm like, what the heck? Uh, uh. But if you don't care about auto steer and adaptive cruise control, then this car is good for you. Yeah, and if you never use the navigation, yeah, why do you use the navigation here? Why don't I use CarPlay? Well, first of all, I'm not, uh, I'm not an Apple. I'm allergic to Apple, uh, so uh, I prefer Android Auto. But um, even Android Auto, huh, huh? It, bu it bugs me that there is a 60 zone coming up. What? But why do you need to display it here? Okay, but but when you use Android Auto and you navigate to a fast charger, you will not get preheating of the battery because the system doesn't go deep into the cars. But if you navigate here on the, in the map, if you manage to successfully navigate, oh, don't slow down too much, oh, shit. Uh, if, you, if you successfully mani manage to navigate to a place, um, you will get preheating of the battery. But uh, however, um, this car is kind of weird. Uh, maybe I'm not gonna demonstrate, but I can just tell you, uh, if you try to find a fast charger it doesn't you know like Ionity wild bike or Ionity Strömstad it doesn't find it. What, do, 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 don't drive so slow shit okay I'm gonna drive now no, normally I was gonna drive by myself now manually but the car cannot find way charging waypoints outside of the current current country you are in it doesn't have to do with distance like I thought initially uh, but if you navigate to Ayundi Namskogan, which is really far up there, like uh, almost a thousand kilometers north of us, no problem, it finds it because it's in Norway, but finding something in Sweden, no. But that is for charging, uh, charging points. If you find another, like a hotel, something in Sweden, no problem, it'll find it. And once you're in Sweden, then you cannot find uh, Ayundi something in Norway. So that's something they need to fix. So uh, I feel like software needs a lot of refinement if you, care or if you, you know if they care also if uh expand cares about this they need to refine this uh, but the car itself is pretty good so that, that's the good part is that the hardware is there you don't have to retrofit anything you just have to fix the software auto parking is also really good it finds spots without you having to scan all over the place it can park on an empty spot it doesn't have to be uh, uh, next to another car like some of the germans um, and also you can also do the remote parking and i know yeah the pull out you're supposed to pull out if it's tight yeah okay but um, for example toyota can actually pull out and move 
to this side. It doesn't just go in and out, you know. But the remote parking is also very nice. You can, via the app also, park the car from uh, when, when you are outside, you know. It's like a smart summon. Uh, but then uh, uh, Tesla has the ass, the actual smart summon. So, um, yeah. But speed enforcement zone, huh? Why? Why is the car bugging me here about that there's going to be a 70 zone soon? Where, is it because I'm going a little bit over the speed limit? Now I go under the speed limit. No, same. It, it, it still bugs me. But also, when, when, when I'm in an uh, average speed zone, the car also bugs me about the average speed zone, but it doesn't help me further. Uh, it doesn't tell me uh, the, my average speed in the speed zone, unlike Tesla starts doing now, uh, and also the Koreans. So. I'm just mentioning, you know, there's a lot of good car, I mean, good stuff with this, with this car. I was blown away by how many banana boxes it can take, for example. And, uh, and the, the charging speed, and even if you're not in the most optimal temperature. Uh, okay, I didn't do uh, the Lillehammer run with the Model Y, but I know how it would be if I would arrive at Ionity or Supercharger. Well, actually, it's a V2 Supercharger, but if I arrive at Ionity with 50% battery and I haven't preheated uh, the car is probably going to take 50 kilowatt only <laughs> you know Model Y so I mean Model Y you now we drive by some Tesla say you know I mean uh, the the Model Y is still a damn good car because they perfected the car over the years they made the suspension better softer uh, they have good space they have good software they have good app you know they have lots of nice features uh, like this car even doesn't have it uh, as far as I remember like uh, dog mode and uh, that's Neo stuff there they, they have dog mode and camp mode and keep climate on uh, so uh, I mean yeah should should Elon be worried well until now maybe slightly because this car actually has better range and better long trip performance like better 1000 kilometer challenge performance even the Sunday drive yeah than the Model Y so if if that matters to you uh, and you can live with the uh, quirks and whatever with the uh, with the car uh, auto steer and software then g6 is by far better than model y but if you care about software and you care about auto steer then i would still go for model y yeah and me personally i'm kind of torn a little bit between them but uh, i would probably just lean slightly toward model y also if i have to buy one of these cars but if i could choose i would probably get an id7 with dcc id7 tourer yeah that's that's a good family car for me oh yeah uh, but yeah because why the heck do you want suvs man everyone in the models they go for crossover and suv nowadays well, I mean, I'm personally not a fan of SV because the ride is a bit uh, boat-ish compared to the nicer ride in a sedan or a station wagon, right? Uh, but, um, oh yeah, speaking of the ding-dongs, the car is really nice. They have, they have improved it a lot. Yeah, they, they improve it a lot in the bing-bong. Like you can activate cruise control at, or, or LCC and it doesn't bug you. Yeah, it's not like LCC activated, you know, that stupid shit that they did before. Um, but sometimes it will actually just, um, how was that? Well, it was on a, when I did the Sunday drive and uh, there, was a, there was a road without uh, middle road markings. You could activate LCC, but then for just, uh, 30 seconds and then you heard that ding, ding, and then it disengaged LCC so it seems like it doesn't work properly Tesla can actually drive on that road properly it doesn't drive in the middle of the road it drives on the right side of the road um, and it works fine with autopilot but here okay it reaches limits and there was one time also when it was raining uh, during 1000 km challenge uh, the LCC couldn't activate and then when they activated it it lasted for maybe a couple of minutes and then it deactivated again and it said that you have to clean the binocular cameras over here. I'm like, huh? But I already, already wiped, isn't that enough? So, um, uh, yeah, sorry, a little bit back and forth, but there's so many topics I want to uh, discuss because I feel like uh, this is an important car for the market. It is actually a, a, a serious competitor. Uh, when it comes to charging speed, I even compare it against the G9, the big brother, it's slightly more expensive. Uh, this car just 
it just has outstanding charging performance just put it that way you know uh, many years ago when i tested uh, g3 man g3 was a joke it's like a crossover smaller okay cheaper but it was bouncy noisy it's, just, it's super annoying in the software uh, it was it had channel it charged at only around 45 48 kilowatt software was even worse than this uh, uh, and also when I tried the P7 uh, it was peaking at around 7, 85 kilowatt and then most of the time it was around 75 kilowatt and even though the car had good drag coefficient uh, because the drivetrain was quite inefficient or something man uh, I don't remember if it either had the heat pump but it, it did 1000 kilometer quite poorly and I was just laughing at how bad the X-Bank was in pretty much everything in performance, software, comfort, uh, you know, charging speed, range, efficiency. Like, but now I ain't laughing anymore. Uh, they actually made a fairly efficient car. It's not that thirsty and it charges fast, you know, it, it has the comfort. It, it, they're trying to make this software better and they, they tone down on the ding dong to uh, to satisfy uh, European customers. So in a way, uh, I'm, I mean, I'm kind of right when I say that Elon should be worried because I suspect that the G6 is going to eat uh, some uh, some sales from Tesla, but also from Vogue and I don't know, other brands. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, there's some ding ding, there's some kind of lane departure or something that pings me a little bit but okay that's fine in case I fall asleep because the car is so comfy uh, yeah also there's a bug here yeah the the, the reset bug yeah it's just uh, if you exit the car and, and lock and unlock uh, too quickly then the, it doesn't reset the consumption properly so uh, yeah I also feel like it needs proper trip meters like European cars uh, but this is just nitpicking uh, maybe most people don't care about this so but I mean overall uh, I mean previously why the heck would people buy an Audi e-tron or something right and not Tesla well probably because they wanted some of the comfort or maybe they don't like Elon I don't know what's wrong with you guys Elon is a nice guy don't hate on him okay he changed the world without Elon there wouldn't be Porsche Taycan. Just think about that. You know, MEB platform wouldn't be created. EGMB platform, uh, the Koreans would still be making some dorky souls and shit. Elon changed the world. Yeah. You should praise him, the Lord. I'm just trolling you with you guys. <laughs> you seem to be triggered every time I talk about Elon. No, but, um, no, but, okay. But I mean, previously you would buy other brands, maybe German brands, because you want some better comfort you don't want to shout to each other in the car how what did you say again we're driving at 100 kilometers per hour can't hear you in the tesla well now you can just have a nice conversation and you don't have to pay that much you know in a way you almost i say almost but you almost get the same comfort as like an in a q6 e-tron you get the charging speed similar to a q6 e-tron but it costs a lot less right and if you don't want to support elon you can support china instead yeah, why not? You know, and if you don't want, you don't want a German car. You don't, you don't like a Volkswagen. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Then get a Chinese car. Yeah. So now you can choose which dictator you want to support. I'm just kidding. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Get so many hate comments now. But uh, I'm not too much into politics. I'm just into cars uh, and how well they are made and how well they drive. And uh, yeah. Overall, though, uh, if you order one, if you're considering a G6, I'd say uh, go for it. It's a good car, you know. It's like if I, you know, I would probably still barely choose Tesla over uh, this G6, even though Tesla doesn't charge that fast. You know, but Tesla can preheat. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so can this car also preheat before fast charging. Uh, but overall, I just like. The, the good stuff with Tesla uh, more than some of the good stuff here. I mean, I can live with some of the dis I mean, the disadvantage of Tesla. That's the way. Uh, but what I'm saying is that um, okay, I would choose Model Y. But if I had to choose between Scenic and the G6, I'll take the G6 any day, man. The G6. Wait, wait, that's not here. The G6 uh, seems to just tick the right boxes for me. Uh, where's the Scenic? It's a nice car, but uh, it kind of lacks the um, 
the Jordan speed, like it's a 92 kilowatt, wait, was it 91, 92 kilowatt hour? Yeah, but it's a big battery, but it should charge faster. Just look at the MB platform. MB platform, they don't have that big battery, but they have done something with the with the battery lately. So it actually charges a lot faster than previous gen. So that's why uh, I also consider the MB cars, even with the smaller 82 kilowatt hour battery. Uh, doesn't doesn't necessarily have to be the 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 pro s the big 91 kilowatt hour battery yeah this is why i'm confused there is a 91 and 92 kilowatt hour battery in the scenic and in the meb cars and in uh, this car and it's, it's, <laughs> sorry if i get lost in the kilowatt stunden but uh, yeah now i'm gonna return the car over here but um yeah, uh, hopefully I gave you guys uh, enough information uh, so you can decide which car you want to go for. So, um, uh, is there anything else I should mention? Yeah, okay, uh, until Uniper is out, then okay, because here we have ambient light, we actually have seat ventilation, no stuff that Tesla doesn't have, in, at least in the Model Y. Uh, but eventually, once Uniper is out, then they, uh, we should also get that. But then, will Elon remove the stocks? because I don't agree with the whole stock removal. It's, it makes the car worse. Wait, I think I'm supposed to go over there. Um, okay, maybe I'll just tell the, tell the gar, car uh, washer guy that I park over here and he can just move it there whenever he's ready. Yeah, I think that's better. So, so I mean, Uniper is gonna be a game changer also, hopefully, but they're also gonna remove the stocks. So, <sighs> but what you can do, is you can get the sexy stock. I heard about it. It's coming soon. Sexy stocks. So just get that, and then you're good. Is this the ID three? Yeah. Park next to the soul. Okay. So I'll just find a parking spot over here. Oh, look, 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 before we end, look at this. Look at this. Wait, you found something. What is that? No, 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 no. I want to find a spot a little bit closer. Why didn't it find that one? Okay, it found something. Okay, start all the part. You see, you can do all this very convenient uh, if you don't know the terrain and you... Wait, is it... The, huh? No, that... Whoa, whoa, dude, then it found that spot. Dude, I mean... There was a spot there I wanted to use, but then why didn't it find it? There was a spot there I wanted to use. Scan mode. Okay, now it found something. No available space. Okay. Well, at least it tells me that. Okay, keep driving. All right, all right. I, I don't know why the freaking layout looks like a motorway. Uh, okay, okay, whatever. I'll, I'll park myself then. Yeah, okay, okay. Like this, roughly. Or, I don't know, uh, poor parking. But, yeah, I, I see that the road markings are a little bit poor. Uh, it found something. Now it wants to help me. See, now it found something there. It said, okay, you, do you need help? Yes, I need help. This is so hard for me. Hey, it claims that there's a car there. No, there's no car there. And now there's a dude in China who parks for me remotely. So there might be a little bit of lag here. He has a somewhat high ping. Wait, how, why did... Dude, China boy, why did he go forward? Okay, okay, I'm not being a racist. I'm also half Chinese. Hey! Huh? He wants to go nose in. The heck is going on here? Huh? Why are you doing all this juggling? Oh, okay, you want to go nose in. I cannot choose between nose in or back in. It will just do that uh, uh, by itself. So that's also a bit weird. But I mean, overall, the, the auto parking is uh, pretty good. I also remember that when you buy this car, everything is included. It's all inclusive, you know, like a buffet. You get everything. You get the auto stair, you get the, the, the um, auto parking. You get the, the smart summon or whatever you call it. You get all the stuff. Like this Chinese guy who is driving for me now is also included in that price. Look, look, he kind of parked for me. Yeah, nice. And then it... Wait, stop, stop moving the steering wheel. Okay, okay. Okay, no, no. And you can always block this camera if you don't want to send data to China also. I'm not sure what happens then. But anyway... Oh, it says limited view. <laughs> yeah, it's the uh, uh, limited view of in-vehicle camera. Okay, okay. But yeah, so anyway, I think that's going to be it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.